listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Mutual Broadcast Network, the Talk Star Radio Network, the Exxon Broadcast Network, and on the Digital Broadcast Network as well. Now, if you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can always listen to past shows as well as find out where we've been in the past, what we're doing in the present, and where we intend on being in the future at xzoneradio.com. My guest this hour is the one and only Michael Horn. We've had the pleasure of having Michael on the show many times. He is a good friend of the Exxon. And he is the authorized American media representative for the Billy Meyer Contacts. And his website is www.theyfly.com which he has researched since 1979 and proved to be absolutely authentic. Joining me now is Michael Horn. And Michael, always great having you back here with us in the Exxon. How are you, old friend? Well, I'm, fi- I'm fine, Rob. Thank you very much for having me on again. Now listen, uh, Michael, these are trying times. And over the years, uh, as, as you know, and I'm sure nobody who has listened to the Exxon for any amount of time knows that I was not... A believer in Meyer many years ago. However, over the years, I have seen firsthand what Meyer has written about years ago come to fruition, undeniably. And I have to ask you, Mike, 
How did you get started with the Billy Meyer Group? Well, actually, I walked into a bookstore in Los Angeles in 1979, and uh, there was the you know first photo book mm-hmm. that was put out by the lead investigator, uh, Wendell Stevens, Lee and Brit Elders, a married couple who were investigators. <laughs> and the photos of Meyer's UFOs were so stunningly clear and authentic, and the information in that book was so compelling that I felt I had found something of you know incomparable value, and yet it would be another, oh, about seven years before I would find the next piece of information, the next body of work, which would have been the transcripts that covered the conversations Meyer was having with these extraterrestrial human beings called the Playaren, and that uh, spanned about a three-year period from 1975 to 1978. So there were 1,800 or so pages of these conversations, and that drew me deeper and deeper into the case and its material, and one thing led to another, and 37 years later, I'm still quite passionately involved with it. Michael, over the years, Billy has, Billy has, you know, written some very controversial things. No two ways about it. And yet, here we are in the year 2016, and 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 prophecies, if I, to, for a lack of better words, that that Billy talked about 20, 30, 40 years ago, are happening. How yes. do you how do you explain this to people who may look at you as if you had? four heads, 16 eyes, and green hair. Well, you know, a lot of people, as a matter of fact, probably a majority of people, certainly in what we would call the industrialized world, take many things for granted uh, that are preposterous. And that would include, in my opinion, politics and definitely religion. There's Mm got to be, you know, dozens to hundreds of religions. They can't all be right, which means that By definition, at least in someone's eyes, they're all wrong. Yet people are, you know, continuously focusing on and participating in religion and politics. They have no trouble being uh, engrossed and engaged in all sorts of, you know, techno entertainment and sports and celebrities. And have largely, to a great degree, lost a sense of reality about their own lives and real life. All right, Mike, we're going to have to do a little bit of a cliffhanger here because you and I have to take our break. ExoNation, Michael Horn is our guest this hour, and we're talking about the Billy Meyer contacts. Mike's website is www.theyfly.com, and Mike and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. 
I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Star began to demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you are able to give factual information, and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. Michael Horn is our guest this hour. We're discussing the Billy Meyer contacts as well as Billy Meyer's, um, what are they called? Predictions? Prophecies and predictions. Prophecies uh, and predictions, yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm sorry I had to cut you off there for, the, for that break, Michael, but please continue. Okay, well, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think I was speaking about the fact that I uh, got involved with the Meyer material and found you know, the 1,800 pages of transcripts seven years after my initial introduction. And that was, uh, you know, quite a an eye-opener. It, it you know, drew me farther into the case. And ever since then, I've been involved some 37 years later, you know, pursuing everything I could in the Meyer case. When it comes to what's happening in the world today with with Donald Trump, uh, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Hillary movement, um, uh, what's happening in the U.S. I'm sorry, not the USSR anymore, but in Russia, what President Putin is saying, what did Billy Meyer have to say about what is going on in the world today, Michael? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, there is so much, of course, and I I don't want to, uh, you know, start rattling and and forget that people need to be able to focus on little pieces here as they come up because there's so many of them. But if we take the current world concern and that world concern being about radical Islam, uh, we, we can know that Meyer specifically foretold this trouble. And it goes back, his, his warnings on this go back to Oh, gosh, 1958. And I'll be able to tell you, as a matter of fact, in 1958, this is exactly, translated into English, that is, this is exactly what he warned about. He said, And it will be that fanatical Islamists carry out bloody revenge on the distant descendants of the Christians for their earlier crusades, 
when they accomplish their deadly and destructive acts through irrepressible terror all over the world. Now, there's a bunch of words here to pay attention to. He doesn't say fanatical Muslims. He says Islamists. And Meyer draws a distinction, the Islamists being people who have corrupted the Islamic faith and inserted all of their own bloodthirsty psychopathic meaning where it did not exist and does not exist in Islam. And when they speak here of bloody revenge on the distant descendants of the Christians for their earlier crusades, this is happening now. As a matter of fact, in one of the articles, I saw an article that was printed where uh, the some Islamic radical even referred to Crus Crusader France. He referred to France as Crusader France. And that's, you know, kind of validating what Meyer wrote nearly 60 years ago. And then he calls it, he says, destructive, deadly and destructive acts through irrepressible terror all over the world. That's pretty, pretty specific, and it is a warning mm -hmm. that what we are seeing now, Rob, is not isolated and only occurring or going to occur for some folks over there, wherever we think over there is. This is the type of thing that we have been... I, I, look, I put this information about the dangers of attacks in France and uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. which are going on now. I, I put that on a DVD of mine in 2004. That's 12 years ago. Meyer published it in 58, 81, 87, 95, and still people go to sleep. You're talking about people, you know, as you said, you know, looking at me as if I have 14 eyes or whatever. But this is happening. It is going on now. And we are not going to see it end simply, you know, by wishful thinking or pretending that somehow these nasty people are going to go away. Ain't the case. Meyer specifically foretold this. So, yeah. So does he come up with any solutions how we can solve this problem? Or have those who have visited uh, Billy in the past, do they give us any any suggestion on what to do? Or is this what the ultimate solution, uh, the the cause and effect will be if we do not take appropriate action? Well, uh, I believe it was November of 2014, quite possibly. I'll be able to look it up. Um, we had an article that was called The Only Way to Stop the IS. And actually the the very specific information in that case was also something that was previously published by Playaron and Meyer, even independently of this Islamic stuff. And what that is, we published that in November, November 28th of 2014. The only way to stop the IS. And what is that means? It's called a true international, a global peace combat force. That means troops drawn from every country on earth, and that force would by necessity have to number at least 300,000 soldiers. That was the figure given two years ago, November of 2014. It probably needs more now. At that point, we are told that the IS, the Islamist State, already had 100,000 soldiers. So that can only be put down by a mammoth force, three times the number of soldiers that the IS possesses, and that they have to be confronted militarily, given the option to surrender, to be taken into custody, tried and imprisoned if convicted permanently for the rest of their lives, or... If they don't surrender, they would have to be literally destroyed militarily. This is the first time ever 
in the Meyer material that they have told us we need to launch a military action. Our country, the U.S., has been busy for the past, you know, 80 years or whatever it is, uh, running around launching military attacks on people all over the world, which have been unprovoked, over 200 attacks. This is one whereby we have to participate. We're not the leader. It doesn't fall under our rule. It has to be a true international force Mm -hmm. that comes together. Now, we've been publishing this in different blogs for some time. I've, I've, you know, talked about it on radio shows and interviews and put it in films and live presentation and all the rest of it. The first sign of recognition, if we can call it that, that, that appeared, uh, and, and I'm not going to say that it means that the, everybody has read Billy Meyer, paid attention, but we have you know, tried to get this information to everybody. So just about a month and change ago, March 24th, there was an article in RT, Russia Today, uh, and also a video where General Michael Flynn, who was the former head of U.S. military intelligence, came out and basically expressed what Meyer was talking about. You know, we have to have a true international force. We've got to get past our issues with Russia, you know, which were are largely the making of, of this country. It's a, uh, you know, it, it's really a crime the way we have provoked Russia and continue to do it. And Meyer, of course, warned a lot about that before, including last year. So, Rob, what we're told here is that this kind of a force is actually something that an American who had been the head of U.S. military intelligence is now calling for. But then, just today, as, as I think you may know, I put out another blog, and that blog refers to the fact that just as of today, Putin, Vladimir Putin, basically called for the same thing. He called it a modern, non-aligned system of international security to fight the threat of global terror, which is primarily and predominantly referring now to the IS, Islamist State, ISIS, um, and Al-Qaeda is in there too. But this is what Putin is calling for. Yeah. Many years ago, let me add, the play Aaron told Meyer that his material is read by the hierarchy in many countries, including Russia. That means Putin, who is a former head of the KGB, has access to Meyer's material, which may also be reflected in a recent policy of Russia's to do as Meyer had suggested and get a project together to deflect the Apophis asteroid incoming. Now, the Russians, you know, as a people, a very, uh, you know, old history, very mm -hmm. tough, long-suffering uh, people with a lot of character and spirit, they haven't been trying to get into more trouble with us. But we in America, we simply cannot resist wanting to go and create chaos and war and try to dominate the world. In a lot of the same material where Meyer advises about these you know, things that are coming if we don't do something, he also specifically warns about the you know in, insane policies of the U.S., which are going to bring us here some horrific results. And I might add, unfortunately, tied into that has uh, been mentioned Canada, that they, that you, mm -hmm. are going to be dragged into this too. So I'll pause for a moment. Why don't we do that? Why don't we take our news break right now and uh, give us time to reflect? <laughs> wow. Okay. Michael, always great having you on the show, my good friend. Exo Nation, Michael Horn is our very special guest this hour. www.theyfly.com. That's www.theyfly.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. The Exxon is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network, the Exxon Broadcast Network, and Talkstar Radio Network. Michael Horn talking about Billy Meyer and much more. 
this hour here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't forget, you can always send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. These are, again, these are very interesting times. And maybe, maybe we might have found the solution to our problems. We'll be back. Don't go away. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Thomas Jefferson was a Burgess of 27 when he met Martha Whale Skelton, a 22-year-old widowed heiress who was fondly called Patty by her family. They were married on January the 1st, 1772, and they took up residence in a cabin on the building site on top of a Virginia mountain that Thomas had named Monticello. As Thomas and Patty slowly built their first version of the great house at Monticello, the Revolutionary War was heating up. Patty, with difficulty, bore five children, but only two girls survived. Thomas's political career developed to the point where he was often away from home, but after he authored and signed the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia, he resolved never again to leave his wife. He was elected the governor of Virginia, just as that state became the revolution's last battleground. The Revolutionary War ended in 1781, and Thomas gladly retired altogether to my family, my farm, and my books. But Patty continued to want to bear her treasured husband a son, and late in the summer of 1782, she died of kidney failure at the age of 33, four months after having borne yet another girl. Thomas was so devastated by her death that he never remarried. He mourned her for the rest of his life, even as he helped to frame the peace in France and then became the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and the third President of the United States. This story is true. Thomas Jefferson was such an obsessive letter writer and record keeper that we know where he was and what he was doing nearly every day of his adult life. Every significant thing he says in My Thomas comes from his contemporary writings. My Thomas by Roberta Grimes is now available at Barnes & Noble, Costco, Target, Books A Million, Hudson Booksellers, Kmart, Walmart, Sam's Club, Walgreens, CVS, and online at Amazon.com. You can visit Roberta Grimes online at www.robertagrimes.com. <laughs> The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. 
Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Annie Callahan, dedicated to negotiating a position for Earth within the Dagaronian coalition, had trained for three years to become an Earth ambassador. Yet, the very eve of her arrival at the capital ruling planet, she is claimed as destined mate to an oversized, mating maddened vamp who swears he will never release her. Lord Astaran, king of the Macian sector, has waited over 900 years for his destined mate, Having found her as an alpha vamp, he is unable to relinquish Annie, virtually holding her hostage until he can claim her. Yet Macians cannot survive without their mate's love. How could he strip her of her citizenship, her ambassadorship, and her freedom and expect to win her heart? With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is the latest book in this exciting series, The Dagaronian Chronicles, guaranteed to keep readers coming back for more. With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is available on Amazon.com and KahiraO'Donnell.com. So Nation, uh, Michael Horn is our special guest this hour, www.theyfly.com. Michael, can you share any specifics with us uh, that might, you know? Sure, Rob. In addition to the things that we touched upon, I'm going to give you some quotes from some of Meyer's, you know, verifiably previously published prophecies and predictions. The... 
the first ones pertain to this whole thing with you know Islam, mm-hmm. and th- these will be from what are called the Hanak prophecies. They're linked on my website. People can find them easily. And here's what it says. I'm starting at number 175. I won't read all the numbers. I'll just read the content for you. And here's what Meyer started to say. And it will be that the fanatics of Islam will rise up against the countries of Europe and all will shake and quiver. Everything in the West will be destroyed. England will be conquered and thrown down to the lowest level of misery. And the fanatics and warriors of Islam will retain their power for a long time. However, not only Europe will be affected, but ultimately all the countries and peoples of the earth as the great horror expands to a war that will encompass the world. Now, these are called the Enoch prophecies. Prophecies means things that will occur if people do not act and make corrections in time. So it doesn't have to come about. But if we do not uh, change for the better, we get that. Mm -hmm. Now, here is more, especially about France. Uh, Let's see here. All right. However, the main objective of the aggressors will be to bring all of Europe under their military control. And for that purpose, France will be selected to be the headquarters. France will not only be invaded by the aggressors from the outside, but will be conquered from within as a result of collaborative forces and other forces. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. This can be envisioned as being the many foreigners of a different religion living in France at that time, and specifically Islam, which will be that this force working from within. I think it's pretty clear. When was this written, Mike? 1987. And this just happened within the last two years? Yes. My God. Yes. Now, now I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no debating what he was talking about. No, it's, this is not Nostradamus. I was just going to say that. Eagle flies and yeah. the, you know, the rest of it. This is specific. He names the countries yep. and the things that are going to happen. So, I mean, what does it take for people to go, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on. And this stuff, of course, has been online in English, I think, since 2002. So it's still, even in English, it precedes all of this. So let me give you a little bit more. Because this speaks about the U.S. Okay. With her global conflicts, which are continuously instigated by her, and which will continue far into the future, America is creating enormous hatred against her worldwide in many countries. As a result, America will experience enormous catastrophes, which will reach proportions barely imaginable to people of Earth. The destruction of the WTC, i.e., the World Trade Center, by terrorists, will only be the beginning. Pretty specific stuff. Can't deny it. No. In the same 1987 document, America and Russia will have the most terrible weapons of mass destruction at their disposal. A fact which is already the case to a certain extent today. And they will clash with violent force against each other at that time of conflict whereby Canada will also be dragged into this conflict. Canada. As already mentioned, 
enormous natural catastrophes, watch this, Mm -hmm. and rolling walls of fire and violent hurricanes will rage all across America, while, in addition, all the terrible effects of war will bring thousandfold deaths, destruction, and annihilation. America's largest cities will be absolutely destroyed. And firestorms will cause great disaster and misery. Now, I mean, you know, we have to sit here. Why would Canada be dragged into this conflict? Good question. 1987, I said, well, I can give you my take on it. Because in the past maybe four years or so, Mm -hmm. as Meyer also predicted... We have that on film. Canada is among the countries that started to contest Russia's claims for mineral rights at the North Pole area. That is true. Yeah. And Canada, with the last, let's say, two years, made a treaty of some sort with the Eastern European uh, state, I guess you would call it, of Georgia. That didn't go over very well with Russia either. 1987, those issues do not exist. And I certainly don't have to tell you what a horror it would be to have rolling walls of fire because already, not I'm not saying it's from this, but what's going on up in, in Alberta yes. you know, is horrendous and monumental and hopefully it's going to be contained, but... We are in these times. I mean, Meyer talks about firestorms twice here in, in just three sentences. And then, you, you know, you, you look at this stuff and he even speaks about China potentially getting into a war first with, uh, no, with India. And that China is going to attack India with biological weapons and kill 30 million people around New Delhi. All of this seems, you know, like couldn't couldn't be. I mean, 1987, we weren't worrying about that. And even now, this whole thing, I've got a blog coming up this week that's going to address more about the, you know, the whole thing with biological weapons. But uh, I, I think maybe, uh, I think I may have done it in today's blog. Wow. Pardon, pardon me about, uh, you know, with Putin. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what, what is what do 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 you think Billy has a take on on Donald Trump and Putin saying you know that you know he basically approves of Donald Trump? Well, you know, Rob Meyer did say he he's got there's a couple articles we have I don't have them right at my fingertips maybe I'll be able to find them mm-hmm. but he had said I think it was a year or two when Putin came out and called out our country as you know just being you know warmongers here and it was in no fancy terms you know that we were out to try to you know spread our power around the world which is yeah. echoed of course here in in this as well uh this is something that Meyer had already commented on in terms of saying that Putin is not wrong now he he's been clear he said look Putin is not an angel this is a very tough man you know, this is not a – well, let's – I'm going to revise what I was going to say a little. He's a guy who is a bit image-oriented, you know, a little showbiz. He's not at all, uh, you know, shy about parading around and, and doing macho stuff. But, you know, um, he, he's a tough person and has a great deal of love for his country. There is something about the Russians, I think, where – you know, their love of Mother Russia is, is a very genuine thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're tired of being invaded by everybody and attacked and, and drawn into wars. So, I, you know, I just think I came upon the thing with Putin. And I'm going to see if I, if I did find it. Um, yeah, I think I actually did because it was back in 2007. And that um, Billy... He says in this, if you want me to, uh, you know, go, go through it a little bit. He, he's talking with Pata, one of the extraterrestrials, and um, he 
He says to him, what do you think about this? I heard in the news today about Russian President Putin uh, has energetically spoken his mind regarding the politics of the USA. Putin said the USA is striving for world ru- rule, as I just alluded to, respectively yeah. world power, and thereby also promotes the pres- resuming of the arms race, interferes in the trade of foreign countries, and practices warlike actions. And uh, then Patel actually says, well, that, that's actually something extraordinary that I saw just two days ago through a look into the future. They, they do, sometimes they don't wait for the paper, I guess. Therefore, your and our expl- explanatory efforts in regard to the USA's real machinations and plans for world w- rule bear the first fruit, which Russia's President Putin has now brought to ripeness in that he named the actual and reprehensible facts which rage in U.S. politics, and it goes on and on. I, again, I, you know, I, I have this on my blog or my website somewhere. It's all over the place. Yeah. A lot of stuff here. So, as far as what uh, you know, Meyer said about Putin, he's also said, interestingly enough, that in the future, it's going to be Russia, strangely enough, that is going to bring kind of the spiritual light to the world. But that's going to be at a time after which I'm afraid, if these prophecies fulfill, that there's going to be an awful lot of grief and war and suffering to a large degree, of course, because of the conflict between the U.S. and Russia and China. Now, as far back as 1975, Meyer warned Russia and China, or the USSR, if you will, and China, were working behind the scenes and would ultimately attack us. 1975. That's 31 years ago. You know what? I, I think the world is going crazy. I really do. Yeah. You know, I, I, maybe it's because of the climate control or the ozone layer or the chemtrails or whatever. But this just came across my desk uh, earlier today. Um, listen to this. This is an online petition. We, the people of Canada, demand, now this is to the Governor General of Canada, by the way. We, the people of Canada, demand you review the following petition against Prime Minister Trudeau on the charge of high treason to the people of Canada. He has failed to keep Canada safe in the midst of Syrian refugee crisis and is putting all of its citizens at risk with his actions. He has appointed an advisor who has tied with, uh, who has ties with Hamas and other terrorist organizations. This insanity has to stop. We, the people of Canada, demand you review this petition and respond to the review of high treason at once and remove him from office. Wow. Well, you know, you asked about Trump. Yeah. Um, I am unaware at this time of anything that Meyer or the player and have said one way or the other, and I, I don't know that they will say too much because they don't tend to get involved in politics in the sense that when things are going on, politically like an election that they start voicing their opinions not that the whole world is resting on it but Mm -hmm. they will if they discuss it then they will publish the information generally after an election you know so they can say this you know this is what we said at the time and this is how it turned out whatever but here's the thing with someone like trump the phenomenon that happened in this country uh so far in terms of the people who had voted to nominate Trump as the Republican presidential candidate, which is yet, of course, to be officially uh, finalized, uh, they bucked everything that the corrupt, ridiculous, horrendous Republican establishment, and the Democratic establishment as well, have, have long stood for, and, they've, and they had floated like 16 other candidates were out there, all of whom, you know, were varying degrees of representing this the status quo, the elite, whatever you want to call them. So Trump said, look, illegal immigration has got to be stopped. He says he's going to build a wall. Well, that remains to be seen. The trade deal that he's referred to, this I think it's TPP, yeah. that has to be repealed or prevented from being enacted and enforced. And then uh, the whole thing about getting jobs back into the U.S. and these are you know, three of the things that he's spoke about, and right. that resonated with people, because illegal immigration, as we can see from what's happening in Europe, if we can't, pay, if we can't get it in our own countries yet, yep. look at what Merkel did, and, and Meyer talked about that a lot. This is the beginning of all of Europe will shake and quiver. 
she opened the door. And in a recent blog, if I may say so, mm-hmm. Meyer said there are now, as of January, three and a half months ago, <clears throat> there were, the play Aaron counted 17,461 IS fighters who had snuck in and are now ensconced in various parts of Europe, not just Germany, waiting to do whatever they're going to do when they decide to do it. That's 17,461. I mean, that's Hmm. that's a huge force. And these are terrorists. These aren't diplomats and negotiators. So we are facing this now. And Trump, you know, resonated with people, but a lot has to be said about that, in my opinion. People that simply rally around, you know, this kind of information. Mm -hmm. And I... I think that you know his points are well taken. They're accurate. I, I also know that people lose their own sense of self-responsibility. They want to run to rallies and protests and carry signs and looking for somebody to save them. Well, we're seeing the same thing on the Democratic side with Bernie and Hillary. Absolutely. Yeah. People want someone to come and save them. Or is and it they- that people finally have somebody or three people who are saying what they've been feeling all these years and nobody's had the nerve to say. Well, I'd say you got two people, really. You've got Bernie and Donnie. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I was Hil- trying to be polite because I don't want uh, Hillary's yeah. people to get ticked off me because I'm not including a lady. <laughs> I understand. Uh, Hillary Clinton, in my opinion, should get a, you know, pass, go, do not stop card to prison. All right, stand by, buddy. We've got to take our break here. ExoNation, Michael Horn is our guest. Theyfly.com, and we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. If you enjoy reading a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love From Out of the Woodwork by William S. Peckham. Sean Kennedy, a Toronto contractor, buys derelict houses, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, a century house in ruins, and starts the renovation, the house fights back. He is visited by ghosts of owners past. His visions are triggered by touching an oak mantle, reading a faded letter, opening an old locket, or opening a brand new casket in the basement. 
These visions will take you on a trip across southern Ontario from Niagara Falls to Toronto to Kingston. From Out of the Woodwork is now available in paperback and on your favorite electronic reader. To order your copy of From Out of the Woodwork, go to www.williamspeckham.com. That's www.williamspeckham.com. Explanation, uh, my good friend Michael Horn is with us at this hour, and he's going to be sticking around for the next hour as well because we still have so much to cover when it comes to the Billy Meyer prophecies. And But before we get back to Michael, I'd just like to read you all an op-ed that I published today. And it goes as follows. Okay, if the people of the United States have legally elected Donald Trump to be their candidate to face the Democratic uh, candidate for president of the United States... How can the rich and powerful people of the United States who have tried and failed in the past be able to thwart what we the people, and that's in quotations, have voted on? Is it not a perfect example of of a corrupt political system? I believe that Donald Trump is a threat to the establishment because they fear what he will expose when it comes to corruption that has been covered up by the good old boys in Washington for way too long. The United States of America is undoubtedly a business, and as such, a business person will be far more successful than a politician who depends on business people to make it work. Plus, let's face it, Donald has a proven track record to the American people that, uh, let me see, um, proven track, I'm sorry, uh, let me see. I, I'm sorry. The let's face it. Donald Trump has a prove, has proven to the American people that the system does work. That if you have you don't have to be a politician to be president of the United States of America. That anyone, anyone can be president. It looks like Romney, Bush, Ryan, and others who do not support their presumptive candidate Donald Trump might have something to hide, and they really don't want it exposed. It'll be very interesting to see how far the establishment will go to deny the people of the United States who voted in a legal process to which Donald Trump was elected as the presentative candidate for the Republican Party. Food for thought, I am Rob McConnell. I just find it ironic that people vote, and just because the vote doesn't go the way the rich and the powerful want it to go, they can start going against their own party. Does that make sense? Well, sure, because um, it must be said that uh, Meyer published years ago Mm -hmm. the fact that George Bush, I think it was the re-election, that he uh, was re-elected because they had stored something like 400,000 votes in computers that they released because Bush had lost the election, actually. A lot of people have, you know, thought that anyhow. And... When people people are very malleable, you know, people who get all excited about politics and mm-hmm. go to conventions and wave flags. It's like it's very externalized stuff. They they want that rush, they want the excitement, the social social stuff, and the feeling that they're really doing something of, of importance. For the most part, it's always it's a deteriorating situation. It's resulted in the worst of the worst usually getting in to office. There are some exceptions. Trump is a businessman, and while there are good things about that, it, it remains to be seen if he possesses wisdom for dealing with other situations. He's probably the best person of all those running to deal with someone like, like Putin because he's got a strong enough character, and he is a wheeler dealer, and Putin mm-hmm. would probably respect that, and they might be able to pull something off there, you know. But we really have to look very, very carefully. In in 19, let's see, was it, no, I think it was 2012, maybe, 2014, um, there's a contact where Meyer and the Play Aaron are talking about uh, what they discussed in 1975. Wow. Michael, let's talk more about this when we come back from the news break. Exo Nation, Michael Horn is going to be staying with us for another hour because we have so much to talk about. 
You can find out more about Michael at www.theyfly.com. I am Rob McConnell. This is The X, and we'll be back after the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue here in The X Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. <laughs> 